Hi, my name's Starsky and welcome to From the Studio on Clubbing TV. In this episode, I'm gonna be making a synth. It's the tiny little Korg Nutect NTS-1. So in here, we do have a synth. Small one in bits. Doesn't take any soldering apparently, so let's see what's in the box. Software bundle from Korg. Some instructions. Lots and lots of different languages. And a box full of bits. <laughs> so let's see how I get on with this. Really tiny screws and a really tiny screw. That is, the, that is possibly the smallest screwdriver I have ever seen. Let's get that out. That, that sure is a tiny screwdriver. Oh. Looks like this is the main circuit board. And we have what's gonna be the case, I imagine. And I think I've got to snap that, which is a bit scary. And here we have probably the world's smallest keyboard as well. And these will be the side panels and corners. So I think I'm actually gonna get those instructions out again. It's looking a bit more complicated than I'd hoped. Although apparently you can do this in 20 minutes, so that's not exactly a huge amount of time to build a sim. Right, now I've found the English version. I'll be with you in about 20 minutes or half an hour. And I've decided I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to sort of follow the pictures. A bit like an Ikea set. If Ikea did sims, this would be the one. So here we go. Let's... Snap that. And again. Scary this. It doesn't feel like it wants to snap. Here we go. <laughs> Whoa. So, snap no problem. So, little 3D jigsaw, let's go. So I'm guessing this is the back. And this will be the front panel with the headphone socket, I'm assuming. After years of putting IKEA cupboards, tables and chairs together, um, I'm finding this not so bad, just incredibly fiddly. These tiny screws. And it says in the instructions, make sure you're doing it the right way round, which I'm not. Two sides on, now time to put the front and the back panels on. Oh my god, what an idiot to put it all together and I've left the keyboard off, so I'm now gonna have to unscrew it all. There we go, so push that out so this can then slide in. Feeling mildly stressed now, <laughs> I've managed to mess it up once. Trying to get the backing of the sticky bit off. There we go. Phew. That's <laughs> stressful. Let's try again. And it seems I've got a couple of screws left over, so I hope I've I hope I've not missed anything out. I don't think I have, but I did forget the keyboard at one point. So there you go, the Korg NTS-1 Newtech Digital Synth that I've built myself and it looks quite nice actually. It's quite a nice little, nice little thing. So let's plug it in, see what it sounds like. We 
we've got volume, we've got USB for power, we've got MIDI in, and we've got sync out and in, which is really cool as well. Plus an audio in, so you can use this as a effects unit. It's got delay and reverb in there. So let's plug it in and have a listen. I'm really excited by this. I'm gonna use this power bank actually, rather than a plug, just to see how portable it actually is. Let's plug that in, see if it works. And there we go. It's ready and waiting, so let's plug it into the headphones. It's got a really, really basic user interface. We've got access to three knobs and six, seven buttons. We've got access to the oscillator, filter, envelope generator, and effects. We've got chorus, we've got delay, and reverb. I say chorus, it's modulation effect. So we've got on there, we've got chorus, Ensemble, phaser, flanger. On the delay, we've got stereo delay, mono delay, ping pong delay, high pass delay, and a tape delay, which is almost like a low pass delay, I suppose. Then we've got a reverb, which we've got hall, plate, space, riser, and submarine. And I think riser and submarine are taken directly from the Minilog XD. I recognize the names from it anyway. So on the oscillator, let's just take a quick listen. We've got sawtooth. And lots of effects now, I've turned them all on. Sawtooth. And we can change the, the shape of that. And we can add a sub. Same with the triangle. And the square. user wave it's like adding FM harmonics almost isn't it and um, this is the thing this is the user wave here actually and that's waves for their SDK which are the waves that you can upload to different synths so there's stuff like the mutable plats waves that you can load in and lots of other third party things and brilliant, brilliant stuff there. In fact, I'm going to do an episode on the Minilog XD, which makes really great use of the waves of the user waves and user effects. And I think you can, might be able to load user effects into this as well, but don't quote me on that. I'm not sure yet. So quite a flexible little oscillator. <laughs> On the filter, we've got low pass, band pass, and high pass, and we've got two and four pole mode on each of them. And then we've got quite a weirdly flexible little envelope. We've got ADSR, AHR, which is attack, hold, and release, attack, release, and then we've got a looping function, and then open, which is just like an open gate. Let's try this looping function. So that's weird, but quite good fun. So we have second modes for each of the buttons as well. If we go into oscillator, press it, we've got an LFO, and we can change the, the shape or the pitch, one or the other. Then we can go to the edit mode to edit the LFO as well, where we can change the frequency. So. And we've got a sort of envelope generator for the filter. Not really, we can sweep it up or sweep it down at the start of the sound. So if we go into filter, we press hold it, and we can see we've got the sweep. So there's the speed. And here's the depth. So that's sweeping down, we can sweep up. a bit slower so pretty basic and pretty fiddly as well but really there's quite a bit more in there than you'd expect especially with the with the effects 
Let's try and make something a little bit nicer. So yeah, it's quite a fair bit going on in that tiny little box. Quite good fun, that. Um, but you know, the question is, is it a Christmas present or isn't it a Christmas present? Well, I've got to admit, I've quite enjoyed playing around with this. I'm gonna have a little play around with it again. It cost me 88 pound, I bought it from Amazon, got it the next day, so I bought this last night. It arrived this morning, and I've not really played with it too much, as you can probably tell by the way I'm playing around with it. But um, quite an interesting little thing. Good fun. I don't think it's a serious musical tool. However, one thing that it might be really useful for is plugging it in as a delay unit or a chorus or a reverb. Maybe I should try doing that in another episode or maybe do a bit of a roundup of various effects units. I don't know, but, but interesting that for just 88 pounds, you've got some really, really nice reverbs in there. Not massively editable, but really, really usable. Anyway, if you enjoyed that, don't forget you can catch it whenever you like on our Clubbing TV YouTube channel on the From the Studio playlist. And if you do enjoy your synths and your drum machines and your studio tech, maybe take a look at my Starsky Car YouTube channel as well. So I'll see you in the next episode of From the Studio.